On this episode of Hot Rod Hoarders, I'm going to tell you about a car named Old Blue. It's a 1963 Chevrolet Impala Super Sport Convertible, and this thing has racked up more milestones and memories than you can imagine. So if we rewind the clocks about 10 or 15 years, family cars didn't mean all that much to me. Even though I had that 64 Corvette back here um, that my dad gave me, it's a pretty big family deal. Um, for the most part, I didn't have a huge appreciation for family cars. Old cars were just old cars to me. I didn't really get that attached to them. My dad kind of raised me to buy and sell and trade on cars, so I never really held on to anything for very long, aside from the Corvette. Well, things changed when I met my wife, Christina, and I met her family. Her dad is also a car guy, um, so you know we're very fortunate in that regard that we share a hobby and we share a love for old cars. So before I ever had a chance to meet Christina's parents, I had heard about some of the cars that he had. And he has a pretty good collection of stuff. A couple of them I have here in the shop now, 34 Plymouth Coupe, which was his high school hot rod. Uh, he's got several other cars and he's not picky about makes and models. He has a little bit of everything. He has Chevrolets, he has Fords, he has Mopars, a little bit of everything. Out of all those cars, the one that stands out, the one that gets talked about the most, is Old Blue. And it's a 1963 Chevrolet Impala. It's a super sport, and it's convertible. And, you know, this car is pretty highly desirable these days. Any kind of 60 Chevrolet convertible, especially a super sport, is a good piece. But for Charles, he's not worried about this car being worth money because it's never going anywhere. It is a member of his family. The Berry family bought this car in 1965 at Southern Chevrolet in Decatur, Georgia. And it was your typical used car. It wasn't perfect by any means, but it was affordable and it was going to be a great daily driver. So right about this time, Charles was of driving age uh, and this was going to serve as pretty much his first car. Now at the time, he had the old Plymouth Coupe that he had been working on. And I've done a video about it you need to check it out if you haven't already. Um, he had the old coupe, which was just a hot rod, pieced together, kind of a wild old car, but he needed something he could legitimately drive. So this Impala convertible was going to be his driver. He actually enlisted in the Navy in 1966 and ended up going to Vietnam in 1967 and served there and ended up being injured and came home in 1970. When these men were in Vietnam fighting for our country, they were surrounded by bad things, things that you can't unsee, things that haunt you day and night. And to have something to look forward to was everything. That was the only thing that could get you through these bad times, was hoping that you could make it home back to those things that you want to be around, whether it was your girlfriend or your wife, or in Charles's case, these old cars. These old cars meant something to him. The old Plymouth Coupe and this old convertible were, you know, important pieces of his family. Obviously, he wanted to get home to his dad, to his mom, to his sisters, his brother. He wanted to get back home to regular life. But he also knew that if he was able to do that, that these cars would be waiting for him. So when Charles got back from Vietnam, he used his little bit of money that he earned and he went and bought a new car. Um, and through the years, he's had several awesome daily drivers. He had a Plymouth Cuda, he had a Boss Mustang, he had a big block Corvette. He went through all of these stages and finally, you know, kind of settled down a little later in the years uh, to some more uh, reasonable daily drivers. But always, this 63 Impala remained. This car didn't get traded in. This car didn't get sold off so that he could buy some speed parts or anything like that. This car stayed. It was meaningful from day one. So he held on to it through all these years. And, you know, as life changed for Charles, this car remained. So that's an important thing to remember because um, for car guys, it's hard to balance family time versus car time, versus work time, versus whatever else. It leaves very little time to fool with old cars. So 
a lot of guys, when they get up into their 30s and they start a family and they, uh, you know, pick up new hobbies, the car stuff goes away. They sell it off. They trade it in for something else. They do something uh, that results in those cars going away. So for Charles, he didn't do that. He didn't fall into that trap. Now, he does wish he had the Cuda and the big block Corvette and the Mustang and all that stuff back because they're worth a lot of money. But none of those cars created the memories that this Impala did. Another thing Charles did with a little bit of money that he earned in Vietnam was he bought a new engine for Old Blue. And this was a 409. He bought it from Lamar Walden. He's an Atlanta area 409 guy. And he bought this engine complete uh, with two fours, the whole nine yards, including a, a Muncie four-speed transmission. So he put that set up in the car and he ran it for a couple of years and he said he just got tired of breaking parts. It was constantly hurting something in the engine, transmission, drive shaft, rear end. It was always something with that combination. So after a couple of years, he got tired of fooling with it. And he had another Atlanta engine guy, John Reed, build the original 327. He put 11 to 1 compression, big cam, you know, good cylinder heads, and put that combination in the car with the Muncie 4 speed that he had behind the 409. So this thing was still a good running car, much more reliable also than the 409 engine, um, and a little bit lighter. So as far as performance is concerned, it's probably pretty close to what it was when it had the big motor in it. Now, I mentioned a lot of milestones, and we're very fortunate to have pictures of a lot of these. Uh, I guess the first big one was 1974. Uh, Charles and Peggy got married. They drove this car away uh, from the wedding, and that's a pretty big deal. And then, of course, uh, babies came after that, three to be exact, three little girls, and all three of them rode home from the hospital in this car. Of course, this is before the days where the, you know, baby seat police were in full force. So you could pretty much drive home with the baby in your arms. That was just kind of what you did. But anyways, all three of the kids rode home in this car from the hospital. That's a big deal. That means that this car had to be running for that. And I don't know if you fool with cars, but that's a challenge in itself. Just to have a car running at any given time to do something big like this. Like, I mean, that's a lot of pressure to keep this thing running for those types of deals. So all three kids came home from the hospital in it. All three kids went to their first day of kindergarten in this car. They also went to other first days of school, not just kindergarten, but throughout the different grades. First day of school was a big deal. So they'd get the, get the car cleaned up, and that's what they'd drive to school. The car has seen all of these milestones. It was used in the little neighborhood parade that they have on the 4th of July. Uh, they'd make a little banner, and you know the girls would ride in the back seat and all that. Uh, the car was just a piece of the family. It was not just something that had a car cover over it that never saw the light of day. Charles drove this car off and on for years. It was his daily driver. It was kind of an in-between car when he was buying and selling and trading around on cars. Um, you know, but it was always around. And that's the important part. It never got sold off. It never got traded off. It never uh, was a sacrifice to make ends meet. And when you think about how hard times are for families and how tough things can get, you know, for this car to survive all of that, it's, it's a big deal. So this car is mostly original. It's not restored by any means. It's very much a survivor. Uh, the paint that's on there has been on there since 1976. You know, he said it wasn't anything special. It was just a paint job. So, uh, you know, it has held up pretty well. Obviously, this thing has been kept on the inside. Uh, he put a new top on it around that same time, rebuilt the brakes, did some engine work, um, you know, made some changes to make this thing drivable and uh, not so rowdy as it was with the 409 and stuff in it. So, you know, through the years, this thing changed a lot. But once it got to the mid-70s, it's it just kind of froze in time. There were no more paint jobs. There were no more interior jobs. There were no more anything done to this car other than just enough upkeep to 
keep it to where it would crank up and run for these special occasions. You know, at any given time, he could have hopped in there. As long as the battery was up, as long as it had gas in it, he could fire this thing up and take off down the road. So for the first several years of my marriage with Christina, every time we'd go down there, the car would be there. We'd walk past it to get into their house. And, you know, it was cool enough just to see it there every time. See it and to think about those memories and think about all the things this car's been through. But as the years went on, Charles wanted to get this thing back on the road because it had been a while since he had been able to actually trust it to drive it anywhere. So that's something that, um, you know, we all kind of encouraged him to do some work on it. Take the summer and just work on this car. Get it running right again. Make sure that it's charging. Make sure that it's cooling the engine good. Make sure that the brakes work good. All of those things. Just go through this car. Make sure that it's where you can just crank it up and go. And he did exactly that. And the timing worked out perfectly for his 70th birthday. And what we wanted to do was go to the Varsity, which has a special meaning for Charles, too, because he ate there at the Varsity downtown Atlanta every day when he went to Georgia Tech. He ate there every day. Like, he knew the people by name. It was a place that, you know, burned into his memory. So we didn't go back to the downtown one, but we went to the one in Athens because they have a cruise in uh, every month during the warm weather. And we decided for his 70th birthday, we were going to go together and celebrate his birthday at this cruise in. And it was just one of those things. It was a special moment to be able to do that. And to see this car out on the highway was awesome. We got to drive with him and take pictures and videos and all that good stuff. And it was just a fun experience. And I know that Charles, I mean, Charles is an emotional guy when it comes to his cars. They mean a lot to him. So I can't, I can't imagine the emotions of driving that car, um, at, you know, that amount of distance uh, with his wife with him and just them being able to kind of celebrate this car, not just walk by it every day like they had been doing, but actually get out and use it. So it was fun for me, it was fun for Christina, it was fun for all of us to enjoy this old car and get it out and let other people see it too. One of the fun experiences for me with this car was doing a photo shoot on it for a magazine. Uh, that's what I do on the side, that's something I really enjoy is telling these stories of these cars and uh, being able to photograph this car was really special to me, obviously. Um, but what was even more special about it was that it was on the weekend of Charles and Peggy's 40th wedding anniversary. So this has been a few years back, but it was still, you know, it's, the car still looks the same as it did in these pictures. But uh, that was really enjoyable for me to photograph this car for a full feature engine, even though it's not pristine. And the car's story means more than a completely restored car with no story. So for me, the, the magazine jumped all over it. I mean, they were excited to see this type of car still exist out there. A car that has 40-year-old uh, paint and original pretty much everything. So that was exciting for me to be able to do that. Take some really special pictures of the family with the car. Take pictures of Carly inside the car. Um, you know, and Carly even got to ride in, in her little baby seat. So it was, that was a super fun experience, um, you know, and, and Charles even let me drive it, which is cool because, you know, he's pretty particular about his cars, and I felt pretty honored to be able to drive this car uh, that's just a piece of the Barry family. So, you know, not only has it racked up a lot of memories and milestones with the Barry family, now that's trickling down into my little family, you know, and... Um, it, it just, this car means a lot to all of us. There's a lot of milestones and memories just soaked up into every fiber of this car. And every time that Charles sees this thing, he can just step right back into those memories. He can step, he can flip the pages right back to 1974. He can flip the pages right back to 1965. Flip the pages right back to 1982. Uh, you know, just 
pick a year, pick a date, and he's got that car. He can flip the light on in his garage and see it and go back in time anytime he wants. You know, there's some cars that people just hang on to because they have the space for it or they don't need the money or whatever the case is. But in Charles's case, there have been times where he's needed the space. There have been times where he's needed the money, but he didn't let go of this car. He kept it because it's part of the family. And I wanted to show it off here because this car deserves it. This car and its story deserves to be told. And just like his old Plymouth Coupe, where you know this car was kind of in his way for years, decades, and in his wife's way and in the family's way, it didn't matter. It was the memories and those milestones that encouraged him to keep these cars. And I'm so glad that he did because these cars tell a story. They allow me to tell a story. And of course, you know, I enjoy doing the magazine side of things, but doing these videos allows me to show more. You know, a magazine just allows for, you know, eight or ten pictures and that's about it. And in a video like this, I can go into detail. I can tell more stories. I can show more pictures and video clips and things and really give you an idea of what this car means. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that, you know, stories like this mean something to you. I know that everywhere out there, there are cars that are meaningful to people. And it's stories like this that just keep me motivated, you know, that uh, these old cars that I'm going to rack up that many memories in my Corvette or in our Chevelle or in any of our other cars. So, you know, it just shows me that I'm not crazy. I'm not the only one who's obsessed with these cars. And seeing this car get some much needed attention, get some driving, get some action, it just makes me feel even better.